Welcome to episode 13 of Hack of the Day. Now in this video, I'll talk about a very interesting uh, piece of code I hacked up together called the Remote Shell Code Launcher. Now this video is brought to you by Security Tube Trainings. We have a lot of interesting courses like Python scripting, iOS, uh, you know, pen testing of iOS apps, Linux assembly and shell coding, etc. Please do have a look. Now, typically, if you've looked at testing shell code, uh, this has almost always been the template we've used to test shell code, right? So you have an unsigned uh, character array in which you paste the shell code, and then you do a little bit of pointer, uh, you know, gymnastics to go ahead and finally execute it, right? Recent versions use a hash define uh, so that you can go ahead and compile normally rather than having to use the no stack protector and you know, enable execute stack and all of that. Anyway, the point still remains that to test shell code, we pretty much still do it locally using templates similar to the one which you're seeing right now. Now, while I was teaching a class, uh, in which we took up some examples of remote exploitation. One of the problems which I run into many a times is being able to find an exploitable service or something like that, which, which I can do the demos. Now, this is where the remote shell code launcher comes in. Really the remote shell code launcher is nothing but a server which is listening on a specific port. And when the client connects to it, then it receives the shell code from the client and after it receives the entire shell code, it just goes ahead and executes that shell code. That's all there is to it, right? As you can well imagine, there are two possibilities of such a remote shell code launcher. One would be the bind shell uh, launcher, which I kind of went ahead and described right now. A variation of course can also be reverse TCP. In this video, we'll just look at the bind option. Uh, all the code is currently on GitHub pasted as a gist. You can download it from the link in the description. So let me go to the actual demo. So here is the remote shell code launcher.c program. Uh, this was pretty much created by salvaging a lot of the old code which I had written for uh, socket programming in C and all of that stuff on security tube a years back. So it's kind of been hacked together real fast. So there could be errors. You can fix it themselves and maybe post in the comment. So we create a socket, we bind the socket to a port. The port is supplied by the user as argv1. Uh, after that, we listen to the port, accept a new client connection. And from there on, we move into a loop where we continuously receive data from the client and basically copy that into a new array, which is what holds our shell code. After the client is done, done sending the data, if the client has sent any shell code, we go ahead and execute that shell code, right? Fantastic. Now let's just go ahead and compile this. compile this. Let's now launch this. Oops, we have to give a port number. Let's say all once. It's listening. Now I go to the new terminal. And what I can try and do is pick up some shell code, which I've been kind of playing around lately with. Uh, or rather, let me just go ahead and use some shell code which I can probably pick up from one of the shell code repositories online. So you have Shellstorm which is an excellent source for uh, picking up different shell codes. My machine is actually uh, you know an x64 so let me go ahead and pick up the bind shell which is available which binds to port 4444. Here is the assembly equivalent and I can just pick up the shell code from here. 
paste it into this program. All this program does is really connects to the remote machine and it just sends our shell code, right? Uh, very simple program. So let me run demo.py. That's the remote machine on which our remote shell code launcher is actually listening, which is 1.13. Send it. If you notice, it's executed and still waiting. Uh, the shell code we've chosen was actually a remote bind shell. So I can just do a netcat to 1.13, port 4444. There you go. Still running. PWD, LS, PS, pretty much you have a remote bind shell available to you at this point, right? Let's exit it. And the server exits as well. So this is really nothing but a convenience uh, code. Honestly, people might have written this elsewhere as well. Uh, I didn't really try and do a Google search simply because of the simplicity of uh, what is really being presented. But this comes in really handy when you want to quickly test shell code, you know, on a machine and you want to check all of this remotely. Uh, you could even do interesting stuff in here, such as we can see a bind shell with netcat. Let's try and pick this up. I'll probably, I mean, I hate having to edit it because there seem to be some semicolons in there. Uh, you could actually do an execute bin bash as well. So I could just pick up the whole shell code from here. Run this again. Go back here to demo.py. And if you notice, we have a shell, right? Now, honestly, you would probably have tested this piece of shell code, uh, which just creates a bin bash shell locally, but fair enough. I mean, you know, there is <laughs> some amount of fun in testing it remotely as well. Of course, this shell is pretty much useless to us uh, from a remote exploitation perspective because it's running locally. It's not really a remote bind shell of any kind, you know, to which you can connect remotely, but hey, you know, Uh, at least something which we can use. So that's all for this video. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, you know, please have a look at our trainings. Uh, the training which can probably help you get started with writing your own shell code and which also includes a very detailed assembly language primer is the Security Tube Linux Assembly uh, Expert course and certification, right? Please do have a look and thank you very much and see you in the next video and please do leave your comments behind. Bye-bye.